big, super huge story yesterday in the mainstream media about Russia and WikiLeaks. And turns out everybody had their head up their ass as usual. This is how this always, this is, it's, it's almost embarrassing for me to even bring, Ron, this is how it goes all the time. Big headline. We got them. Russia and Trump. And bam. And then, oh, we, uh, Trump Jr. met with a Russian lawyer to get stuff. Oh, blah, 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 blah. oh, guess what? The dossier has all the. Oh, guess what was the last one? Uh, oh, WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks uh, s- sent an email to Trump Jr. Or they had a secret. They had a secret um, yeah, with, with exchange. Yeah, with a code in it. There was, and, no, no, that, no, that's this one. But uh-huh. the one before was oh, the they had a secret. the one before was the Twitter thing. They yeah. had a Twitter thing. They had a secret ex- ex- exchange of information. You mean they direct message each other on Twitter? So there was that one, and that turned out to be, again, nothing. And then this one yesterday, and that, but they all ran with, so. Yeah, this time they don't just have egg on their face. They have an entire omelet. Yes. Not, not just any <laughs> omelet, but one that was featured on Man vs. Food. Like, they really messed so in, up So time. in June, a couple of uh, top CNN reporters got fired for a, for a misreported uh, story about Trump and Russia. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yes. Uh, just last week, Brian Ross got suspended for four weeks for dropping another fake story, or, the, or was it week before last? So within the last two weeks, ABC reporter got suspended for a month for yes. doing this exact thing. And now here we are, the next week, CNN doing the exact again. Oh, my God, we got him. Do you remember we, remember we showed Joy Reid? Remember her? Oh. Remember Joy Reid? <laughs> we showed her reading. They got him. So now there's this. And the way Glenn Greenwald describes it in The Intercept is the U.S. media yesterday suffered its most humiliating debacle in ages and now ref- refuses all transparency over what happened. So that's it. That's so he goes in to talk. We're going to talk a little bit about, but let's show you the news report. So here's the news report. Hello, everyone. I'm Kate Baldwin. More emails, more problems for Donald Trump Jr. and the Russia investigation. CNN has exclusive new details about a message sent in the final stretch of the 2016 campaign offering access to hacked WikiLeaks documents. A previously undisclosed effort to reach Donald Trump himself, his son, and his inner circle just weeks before the election. This comes, of course, on top of other new evidence. Other new evidence of follow-ups to the famous Trump Tower meeting between Don Jr. and a Russian lawyer. Follow-ups that he had promised when he had promised there weren't any. Let's get over to CNN's senior congressional correspondent, Manu Raju. Manu, there's a lot that you have gotten in the past day, in the past day plus. Lay out your new reporting today on this effort to give Trump access to WikiLeaks documents. Can you lay out your reporting that you actually didn't fact check and you actually didn't see the email that you're about to report on? Can you can, get lay it on us? Lay us on your incorrect facts about the reporting. You actually didn't see the email. <laughs> Here we go. Well, Kate, this email on September 4th, 2016, was sent to Donald Trump, then candidate Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr., and others in the Trump organization, including Donald Trump Jr.'s personal secretary. And in this, uh, personal assistant, I should say, and in this email, uh, it, it actually has a decryption code and a link to a web address where purportedly they could have received the hacked WikiLeaks documents. Included in this, it says that they could also receive uh, the hacked uh, Clinton uh, Colin Powell uh, emails. The former boy, this boy, this guy has a hard time talking. <laughs> no kidding, huh? Well, can I put on a quick side note uh, that, that I think is worth mentioning? As of right now, unless something changed as of yesterday, because Brian Stelter, the quote unquote watchdog <laughs> right? over at CNN, uh, th- this uh, reporter is not going to face any consequences. No, according no. to CNN, they followed due process because they had these two random protected sources. So. That- so if you hear, if you listen to what he's saying, what he's trying to say, and he's saying it so garbled, this guy is a what for a reporter. This guy can't communicate worth a crap. <laughs> I'm, is, could he put more us in there? Uh, there was a uh, the four on the fourth uh, the fourth of sub, uh, September. Uh, they had a uh, e, uh, to uh, Trump at uh, and and uh, Trump Junior. Uh, am I am I am I? I know I'm exaggerating to make a a joke, but. Is am I overreacting to how horrible this guy is explaining the well, story? I think it was pretty clear. There was correspondence when they said there wasn't correspondence, and the correspondence might be the correspondence <laughs> we're looking for for the correspondence. 
Aren't you? With a link. <laughs> <laughs> Let's listen to a little bit more. Secretary of State, whose own emails were hacked and were released 10 days later by a Russian front group. Now, the timeline is important here because on September 4th, that was after a month. Now, the timeline is important here. <laughs> the timeline is important here because we're getting it wrong. <laughs> That's why it's important. That's awesome. And by the way, this guy, they, they have all the, all the money in the world, all the assistance. You know who helps us do our research here? Me and Ron and Steph. Okay? That's it, right? So if one of us aren't, they, he has assisted. They have a newsroom. They have a newsroom <laughs> of people. And, and it, nobody, nobody said, hey, did you see the email? And when he said no, they go, well, we, why don't we wait till we see the email and we can double check the date on it? <laughs> no, look, let's just go with it. You haven't seen the email? No, but your source has. Yes. Why couldn't your source show you the email? <laughs> right? So nobody d fact double check this. So here We're we go. Protecting them. So look at this. So look at this. So uh, July 22nd, WikiLeaks post hack emails. September 4th, email sent to Trump, Trump Jr. Offering key for hack WikiLeaks. That did not happen. There was an email. So just so you understand what happened, the day WikiLeaks dumped the emails, they also sent a someone sent an email to the Trump campaign saying, hey, check out all these uh, these documents. And here's an encryption key. And it was sent. So and it was sent by a guy. No one knows. No one knows who this guy is. And so why is that important? So if it was sent on that day, that's a full 10 days before WikiLeaks re dumped all that stuff. So that would mean they were working, giving information before they release all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when people then make the leap, they go, well, if WikiLeaks was working with the Trump campaign, well, WikiLeaks, we know it was working with Russia. So Trump and Russia. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, news organizations get to communicate with whoever they want to communicate with. Just, is that, just so that's clear, okay? <laughs> news organizations get to send emails to Russia. <laughs> they get to send emails to the president. They get to send emails to other news organizations. They get to send emails to anybody they want. People running for president. People they probably send emails to them. They can send emails for people running for president. So, uh, and then, anyway, so let's keep going. After so, the DNC. You know what, Jimmy? I just wanted to say, so CNN and CNN's exclusive is just nothing there is no exclusive here to see everybody just a lot of uh made up facts yes well they got it wrong well you know his... they got the date wrong on the email they didn't they didn't look at the email themselves and then they ran and published it so they didn't double check it they got it wrong you know especially after they just fired some top reporters for getting something wrong already this past summer and then how ABC just had to suspend Brian Ross. And uh, and then that's that's, you know, how about Rachel Maddow? Well, we got Trump's we've got his tax returns. <laughs> <laughs> we've got the dossier. <laughs> it's just one false thing <laughs> after another. And and so and so now CNN doing their best to make Trump's fake news thing stick. You got to yes. be better than the president. You got to be better than the other people. You got to actually look at the email you're reporting on. Can I tell you that what uh, Manu Reju's uh, correction statement was? Well, here it is. This is okay. I'm going to show you in a second. Great. Was hacked, and after their own uh, emails became leaked, and it was a month before Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta's emails uh, were leaked by WikiLeaks, and it was. Also, a couple weeks before WikiLeaks was corresponding with Donald Trump Jr. on Twitter via direct messages. Now, the person who sent this email is someone by the name of Mike Erickson. Uh, we don't know who this individual is, and the congressional well, investigators themselves uh, don't know who this person is either. Well, but so I don't know who this sent this email. The con congressional investigators have no idea who sent or who this is, or and you don't even know what the date is of it. A you got the date wrong. You don't know who the guy is, but you're definitely sure that what's in the email is 100% factual. 
Isn't that weird? <laughs> it's weird that he doesn't have any time to figure out who his source is. I, no access? Well, that's what, Gren, what Glenn Greenwald is saying in his piece today is that they're not revealing who these people are who gave them false information. Right. So we're, who is this? Who is, who are, well, let's keep going a little bit. Uh, but Mike Erickson sent this email uh, to Donald Trump Jr. Uh, saying that they could access these documents. And Donald Trump Jr. was asked about this, Kate, at the House Intelligence Committee's classified hearing yesterday, uh, earlier this week, and when he said he had no recollection of this email exchange. Now, uh, the attorney for Donald Trump Jr. just put out a statement uh, responding to our, our latest report uh, mm -hmm. say, saying this, we understand that the media reported 12 hours prior to this email that the DNC emails have been hacked or leaked. We do, not, we do not know who Mike Erickson is. We have no idea who he is. We never responded to the email. But interestingly, Kate, uh, on the same day that Donald Trump Jr. received this email was the first time that he appears to have tweeted about WikiLeaks. This is what he tweeted. On okay, this is all false. They're just, just, again, false. And then he tweeted this that day. They like to do that. When they, when, when they do these kind of stories, mm -hmm. they go, yeah, but then he had this, so that's uh, all this stuff that should be suspicious. Does, we don't know what the F it means. Doesn't yeah. mean anything. Trump Jr. tweeted about WikiLeaks that day. They're trying to fish and? for all these connections. Like, yes. they're, like they're just trying to be like, and that was the first day he tweeted about WikiLeaks. Yeah. And then that was the second day that Kevin Bacon tweeted about this. <laughs> like, like, they're just trying to make all these connections. So let's see a little bit more. Of that this. day, September 4th, WikiLeaks, Hillary Clinton sent thousands of classified cables marked C for confidential, having, including a link there, to, to WikiLeaks. So Julian Assange himself has tweeted about our story also saying it is not clear what this has to do with WikiLeaks. But I can tell you, Kate, this appears to follow a pattern of the way that WikiLeaks provides this kind of information, uh, giving this decryption key oh. and a website link. Wow. Uh, whether this happened here, we don't know. And we also don't, it doesn't appear that the Trump campaign or anybody contacted the FBI after they received this email, they said they just didn't act on it and didn't respond, Kate. And to be clear, Don <laughs> Jr. says he doesn't recall seeing this email. Yeah, he doesn't recall seeing this email. He did said, and then his lawyer said he took no action on it. Uh, so that's where we stand right now. That's we testified okay. under oath. So separately, but I guess all, all connected, there, these previously unknown follow-up emails. So everything's connected. Everything's connected. <laughs> So here he is. So he had to come and uh, he, so here he is with his statement uh, correcting his reporting. And again, I watched this before and he's uh, not a clear speaker. I'll put, let me put it this way. I'll put it that way. This guy's a, too many ums and ahs uh, and you don't understand what he's saying. So here we go that we have been reporting uh, throughout the day today about an email that was sent we have been to the Trump campaign, to then-candidate Trump, Donald Trump Jr., uh, and others uh, during the heat of the campaign season. This email uh, included uh, a decryption key and also uh, it's something, and a link to where they could act. Also, in, uh, a, a link and uh, a, a decryption email. Uh, I, I'm sorry, this guy's not clear speaker. I don't know, I don't know what he's talking about. What, so what do you want to clear? You want to clarify? Hey, the story we reported earlier that said there was an email sent on September 4th. It wasn't. It was sent on September 14th, which totally blows our story away. So that's all he had to say. But he listen to all this garbage. I, I'm going to start it at the top. We are actually correcting a story that we have been reporting uh, throughout the day today about an email that was sent uh, to the Trump campaign to then candidate Trump, Donald Trump Jr., uh, and others uh, during the heat of the campaign season. This email uh, included uh, a decrypt. During the heat of the campaign season. Why, why are you adding all this extraneous information? During the heat of the campaign season. It certainly doesn't well, sound like a correction. It right? doesn't sound it like a correction. It sounds like he's just saying we had a correction, and I'm going to okay. tell you every single fact and detail Before that I, I get tried to the to correction. It's like start with the correction. <laughs> And you notice even on the crawl or anything, they don't, they're not even saying correction. And I like how Glenn Greenwald writes. He goes, how did CNN end up aggressively hyping such a spectacularly false story? And look, look at what's happening right now. So yeah, let's go back.
in key and also uh, in some, in a link to where they could access some of these hacked WikiLeaks documents from the Democratic National Committee. Now, we've been reporting uh, that this Incorrectly. email came on September 4th. That's exactly right, Steph. That's what he, he should, should say. Now, we've been incorrectly reporting. He didn't say that. Uh, that was before uh, some of these documents uh, were publicly available, but we have just received, obtained a, a copy of this email. Uh, and instead... Uh, you know, the email we've been reporting about, that we've been hyping like they crazy? they just received. The thing we've been hyping like crazy? Well, another news agency went and hadn't got that email, the Washington Post, and so now we got it from them. That's that's who got that's who broke that they got the story wrong. It was the Washington Post b broke it that they got it wrong. They had the email. So now, no, we have the email. How come the Washington Post could get a hold of that email and CNN, the most trusted name in news, can't get a hold of that email? This is would be what. <sighs> so now he's so now I saw an ad for CNN that said apples are apples. <laughs> Yes. Did you get a And source? no matter if you say it's a banana, it doesn't matter. It's but still apparently an apple. It's, it's still an apple, but except that it's a banana? Mm-hmm. Okay. We now learned that this, uh, this email was on September 14th. So that is 10 days uh, later than what we originally reported earlier today. And, and this is, appears to Pause. change the understanding. Pause. 10, uh, days later than we, 10 days later than we previously reported today, what are you talking about? Again, it's just, con he couldn't be more convoluted the way he's, you're trying to explain your miss up, mishap, you're being as fucking convoluted as possible. Yes, Go ahead. and somebody behaves that way in a couple situations. A, they're incredibly nervous. This guy's a reporter for CNN. I doubt that's the case. B, they're lying. <laughs> I don't know what he's, he's, he certainly doesn't want to say, wow, we really screwed up and we were over again. We just we did a horrible thing. And uh, he tries to put all these words in between. Well, now, we originally reported that it was uh, 10 days earlier, but it turns out it was at this day. So that kind of changes the fundamental under misunderstanding. But well, we were understanding that, that. What the F? <laughs> Arno, you're a regular person, right? You're <laughs> yeah. Regular person, you're Arno. Regular person, Arno, Arno. Does, this, does this seem crazy to you? Yeah, okay. How does, Arno says how it's does crazy. Brian Ross get suspended for four weeks, and this guy still gets to go back on television? I don't They're know. They're saying that the watchdog himself is claiming that he followed due process. This reporter followed due process. So let's get this is the let's that listen is a to bad the, due process. Let's listen Amen. to the rest. This story because initially it seemed perhaps they were being offered access uh, to documents that were not yet publicly available. But in this email from an individual named Michael Erickson, they do direct the Trump campaign to some publicly available documents, hacked documents from WikiLeaks as well as from the former Secretary of State. So he just hacked documents. They do direct the Trump campaign to these hacked documents. Hacked, hacked doc. They do have the hacked document. What the <laughs> f? So he's still trying to say, hey, it's, it's mostly true. That's what he's doing. <laughs> Colin Powell saying that those documents are indeed available. Now, our initial reporting on that September 4th date was based on two sources who had seen this, this email, but that information was incorrect now based on... Who so had they, they seen... And they won't tell us who those two sources are. Nope. So that's what Glenn Greenwald said saying in his report today, that w if you're going to get it wrong, you have to be transparent and tell us what happened. Who were your sources? And as uh, just a couple of weeks ago, do you remember the Veritas, right? Uh, they tried to g uh, push false information to the Washington Post about Roy Moore. So they tried to push false information to the Washington Post to discredit the Washington Post, right? Because they knew the information was false. You get them to print it. They did the same thing to Dan Rather. That's how they get rid of Dan Rather. They gave in incorrect information that was, uh, f it was, it was a phony document with true information. So they go, oh, that's a phony document you reported. So they're doing the same thing here. So um, Glenn Greenwald says, you got to tell us who those. So the Washington Post outed who those off the record. They go, oh, we're going to give you some information off the record. Normally, you keep everybody's secret when they say off the record, except those people from Veritas were trying to deceive the Washington Post. So they outed them. The Washington Post said, here is the person who was trying to give us false information. Here's our false information source. And they outed them, which you're supposed to. So what he's saying is that their two sources gave them false information. Who are those sources? That's what Glenn Greenwald says. Well, if they gave you false information, you should out them. Who gave you the false information? Two sources? He goes, we, uh, we checked it with two sources. Who are they? They gave you false information, probably on purpose. Who are they?
they're not going to tell us. And that's bullshit. And that is bullshit. So there's more to this. A copy of the email that we have obtained uh, this afternoon. So, uh, so uh, Brooke, it just shows that uh, perhaps the initial understanding of what this email was uh, perhaps is not as significant. Per I kept saying perhaps. Mm -hmm. What? Okay. So it, it may perhaps it might not be perhaps you don't even know who the guy was. You saw it's a different date. It has a totally different meaning. If he had you a fucking liar, it has a totally different meaning. Now, he, now that's lying. If he had a watch on his hand, he'd be looking to see how far until commercial. He's just <laughs> filling the time with words. Yes. And he knows he has to backpedal and he knows he has to bullshit. And I can't help but think that maybe they knew this all along. Well, well, go ahead, Steph. Well, I was just thinking that congressional reporter Manu Raju. Yeah. I think he has a new show called Unreliable Source. Ha, bam. <laughs> bam. Steph was like, hey, Zamorano. <laughs> let's see if let's see how some more how he fills time before the commercial. That, by the way, so what he just did when he said perhaps this changes the understanding, you know it changes the meaning of your report a thousand percent. It kills the story. So you reporting it the way you just reported it, you're still trying to confuse. So here's why it's horrible. What they're doing is trying to bullshit their own viewers who look to them for information. So he's trying to BS them right now. Perhaps this changes the meaning. So he's saying it in a way that's convoluted so nobody could follow what he's saying. We're pointing that out to you right there. So he's being dishonest in the way he's trying to correct his bad reporting. And now he's totally being dishonest. When you say it perhaps changes the meaning and you say perhaps how many times did he say perhaps? For noon. So, uh, so uh, Brooke, it just shows that uh, perhaps the initial understanding of what this email was uh, perhaps is not as significant as what we know now based on this email. We do Two know perhaps. that Donald Trump Jr., when he testified before the House Intelligence Committee, was asked about this email. He said he had no knowledge of it, which we were... We were it's funny how he can, he can push certain words. <laughs> he can push certain words, but uh, perhaps our reporting was not right. Uh, Perhaps but, but he, he denied. <laughs> what is he doing? Reported earlier as well, and uh, his attorney said he did not act uh, on the uh, offer to act, obtain these hacked emails. That's a statement that they continue to say today. Uh, but this email is came on September 14th, not September 4th, as we said earlier, bro. As we reported earlier. Perhaps we've agreed that 24 hours are in a day, and perhaps more days had passed than what we let on. Uh, go back. We have updated this video to include the correct date and present the proper context of the timing of the email. So that's from CNN. Now it gets better. MSNBC oh. ran with this story, so you go, oh, well. I bet they did. It's not their fault. Somebody else reported it. That's a credible news source, so they just reported a credible news source's reporting. No. No, that's not what happened. What happened was this. The MSNBC independently verified that bullshit report. You, you think I'm kidding? Let's watch. It's coming into our, our NBC newsroom right now. Congressional investigators are trying to figure out who sent an email that gave Donald Trump, his son, and others a decryption key for hacked WikiLeaks documents. I want to bring in NBC News intelligence and national security correspondent Ken Delanian. Uh, Ken, tell us what we've just now learned. I know you and some of our colleagues have just confirmed some of this information. What's up? That's right, Hallie. You and some of your colleagues have just confirmed this information. So that's how she intros it. You've confirmed this. Here we go. Two sources with direct knowledge of this are telling us that congressional investigators have obtained an email from a man named Mike Erickson, obviously they don't know if that's his real name, offering Donald Trump and his son Donald Trump Jr. access to WikiLeaks documents. This was about September 2016, right in the middle of the campaign when WikiLeaks was putting out some documents, hadn't put out other documents. Remember, the Russians had hacked the Democrats and handed this stuff over to WikiLeaks. Remember. So he just reports that as fact now. Remember, the Russians had hacked. Did you, did you, did you hear that? Did you hear what he just yeah. said? Yeah. That's amazing. So was putting out some documents, hadn't put out other documents. Remember, the Russians had hacked the Democrats and handed this stuff. They just, re they just, re that's just a fact now, I guess. Yeah, that's just an assumption there. Yeah. 
I mean, that, that's been the case for a long time now. You know I, what? Over this is horrible at, at because they, that's just that's stunning that they report it that way. That is stu- I mean, what's stunning? I've, I've 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 always heard those mealy mouth words around it. Those qualifiers. Now, re- remember, as reported, Russia, or as as this as our intelligence agencies say, mm-hmm. I've heard it reported. I've allegedly, never, even, or alleged, yeah. I've never heard it just straight up reported as a fact. Mm-hmm. I've, that's amazing. That guy should be a fire too. Well, yeah, Jimmy, I'm sitting here as you're revealing one story after another, skimming Glenn Greenwald's article, and you go like this. You're like, why are you continuing to give Donald Trump all this ammunition this about him. fake news? Yeah, how miserably do you have to fail to almost make the Trump administration look like victims? Can you stop? Can, can I just have a question for the mainstream news media? Could you stop reporting on Russia? And start reporting on the tax bill and start reporting on 30 million people still left out of health insurance, half the country poor, or low income. Could you start reporting on that? Could you st- <coughs> How about start reporting on Yemen? Start reporting on the losses that we're, we're f- the people are facing in Syria. How about those things? How about Flint, How- Michigan? How about anything? <laughs> yeah, we How can- about report? There's a million things you could be talking about. Except what you're doing here is propping up Donald Trump, like you always have, by the way. You yes. do it wittingly and unwittingly. Yes. You prop up Donald Trump. And guess what? You all don't give a shit. Well, that's Vo- Moonves, the head of CBS, said, go, baby, go. Go, Donald. He's bad for America, but he's good for CBS. That guy should be fired for that. That's unbelievable that he did that. He didn't give any qualifiers. He didn't say, as you know, as it has been reported, or as the CIA has said, or our intelligence, our 17, you remember that lie? The 17 intelligence communities, which was a lie. So one lie, like, they, there's, there's nothing there, and they just keep rep- repeating lie. So you keep getting caught. This helps Trump. Go, Isn't let's... Chuck Todd their editor-in-chief at uh, NBC? I don't, I, I don't know. Over to WikiLeaks. So the issue here is congressional investigators do not know whether this was a legitimate, real overture from WikiLeaks. But one of the sources told me they presume that Robert Mueller knows and can get to the bottom of that through the technology and the mm. intelligence resources he's got at this command. But um, if so, she introduces the piece by telling him that you've confirmed this independently. He just said that he didn't. That we don't know if this even came from Wik. Didn't he just say that? Yeah. He just said we don't even know if this came from WikiLeaks. So how is that independently confirmed? <laughs> he just admitted that we don't know, but Robert Mueller knows. That's that that this this goes for reporting, by the way. This is this is how MSNBC this passes for reporting on MSNBC these days, where they go, ah, uh, we're gonna get something. <laughs> That's their whole report. Ah, Mueller knows. It's it's all gonna be bad. And for the Trump. more convoluted it is, the more grass will draw, so you won't know. Wow. It was a a real overture from WikiLeaks. Obviously, it raises a host of questions. It goes to the heart of the collusion question, right? Because WikiLeaks was... So again, this is all speculate if. He goes, if it was. If it was, this is horror. Again, why don't you go verify the fucking email? You have everybody at NBC to help you. You have a a quadrillion dollar company to help you. You have unlimited resources why don't you go try to find out? Why don't you go figure it out? That's that's mind blowing to me. It's this my- is your job. He's the intelligence and national security correspondent. So he's their top guy on intelligence, right? He's their intelligence uh, reporter, and he's reporting speculation as fact, which is a uh, journalism. Uh, 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 that's an affront to journalism one hundred and one. That's journalism malfeasance 101 reporting speculation is fact. It, that's not a fact. Well, even the claims he's making, even if like their timeline was correct, it's still like like he just said, like at the end of what we just played, this gets at the heart of the collusion question. Does it? Does it? You don't know who this person is that, that sent the email. How does that know. get to any collusion Mike question? Mike Erickson at Yahoo.com really sounds like uh, somebody you can trust. <laughs> By the way, I, I love the way Glenn Greenwald uh, examines Ken Delanian. He says... Um, you mean this guy? Yeah. Uh He says, uh, Delanian, whose career in the U.S. media continues to flourish, the more he is exposed as someone who faithfully parrots what the CIA tells him to say.
Yeah, so if you think that the CIA still isn't pushing stories to reporters, I have some proof that they're still doing that. <laughs> okay. He just reports it as fact. This is awesome. Awesomely horrible. Acting as an agent of Russian intelligence, publishing hacked emails that hurt the Democrats and helped Donald Trump. And Ken, uh, Donald Trump, and I want to bring in Zeke Miller and a lot of shore who are with me here and stay as part of the conversation there, pal. But Donald Trump loved WikiLeaks on the campaign trail. He talked about him again and again, despite uh, real concerns oh, from well members then. of the intelligence community that that was a huge mistake. This seems like a significant development. Yeah, I mean, obviously the president, now president, then candidate Trump, you know, encouraged WikiLeaks to hack Hillary Clinton's uh, you know, emails out of their, their offer server. Uh, but the question is, you know, who was this actually from? Is it legitimate? Is it from WikiLeaks? And then also, what, if anything, did the Trump campaign yeah. and people around Donald Trump do with it? Right. What was the did response? They, did, they, yeah. did they ignore it? Did they open the email? Did they click the link? Did they download these emails? Ken, do we know? Do we have any guidance on that? No, we, are, we have asked and we are waiting a response from Donald Trump Jr.'s lawyer. And, and right, one of the big questions is, did they call the FBI, for example? Right. Uh, they haven't done that in other cases where overtures from Russians came in, you know, offering incriminating information about Hillary Clinton. But you're absolutely right. That is a huge question. We're trying to answer it right now. And trying to mind, answer Holly, with only false one assertions. of three congressional investigations into Russia is really functioning right now. Mm. And that's the Senate Intelligence Committee's yep. investigation. The House is a partisan mess. The Senate Judiciary Committee has become a partisan mess, in large part over whether to bring in Donald Trump Jr. Mm. and subpoena him over this exact question. So, so Donald Trump Jr. is about to come into the Senate Intelligence Committee any day now. And this is an We don't know when yet. Right? We don't know yeah. when yet, but it's, it's kind of a political tinderbox on the Hill right now over him and this exact issue. Now, Donald Trump Jr., Ken, uh, has already come. We saw him just this week coming over to speak with House investigators. That's right. And we are getting uh, the Democrats on that committee, to, to speak to the point of your other guests, are very dissatisfied with how that eight yeah. hour, hour interview went. They're saying that he did. OK, because they got no dirt. So That's why they're very so disappointed. Here's the, here's the email. Oh, it is at Yahoo.com. So here's it is Michael Erickson, me 98 at Yahoo.com. <laughs> That's where this came from. Sounds no like one a knows reliable that... source. I think no. we need to get him on the phone. Arno, dial 8675309. <laughs> Nobody knew who that guy was. That guy who just you just so heard from, there's ex specialist at MSNBC who reports speculation as fact. He didn't he doesn't know who that guy is. Uh the, the gentleman from CNN who broke the story, uh bro didn't, I got do you still call it a breaking story if it's no story? Who pretended to break the story? Did he, he doesn't know who this guy is. He he admitted. I don't know who. No one knows who this guy is. So this is. And by he admitted, he admitted he hadn't seen the freaking email. Isn't that amazing? And so there it is, Michael Erickson, and it's sent nine fourteen twenty sixteen two o three forty eight p.m. So there you go. Dear Mr. Trump, WikiLeaks has uploaded another huge archive of files. Michael J. Erickson, President, Aviation Management Inc. That's what it says. And President Pre Drone Cohabitation Services. Services. Mm. So that's who that guy is, <laughs> I guess. So, and, and uh, Glenn uh, Greenwald uh, put this in his article. He caught this. Here's a guy from Brookings, uh, Benjamin Witz. Is that how you pronounce mm -hmm. it, his last name? So he puts the story up with the, uh, and it just says, boom. Boom. Ah, oh, wow. Nothing. Nothing. You remember the other day Ari Melbourne tweeted out just the date? Remember that? Bam! That was, was going to be the thing. Turns out Brian Ross was wrong. Those were, That reporting was wrong. Boy, people love to be, uh, you know, dramatic about this, right? That's what that is. That's what that is. So there's lots of more. That's just one example. There's lots of more examples like that. Um, you know, Glenn Greenwald also included in the Intercept article, he has a clip where it's a title from um, a news source that says, L.A. Times disowns reporter outed as oh. a CIA collaborator, and that's your good friend, Ken Delanian, that we just saw report. Wait a minute. Are you kidding LA me? L.A. Times disowns reporter. If you go to the Intercept article and you scroll down, and it's right after Delanian Ken Delanian's on N NBC News, news correspondent. And if you just scroll right below it, you'll see the, the headline. 
embedded in there. L.A. Times disowns reporter outed as a CIA collaborator. Ex-Tribune reporter said to have collaborative relationship with CIA. Recently released emails indicate that prominent national security reporter Ken Delanian, formerly with the Los Angeles Times, currently with the Associated Press, and from 1997 to 2007, the Philadelphia Inquirer shared stories prior to publication with CIA press office seeking their approval, according to the story. So this is the guy? Yep. L.A. Times. Is so, that's him. Yes, it is, Jimmy. That's the guy we just heard from. The guy who repeats CIA speculation as fact. Ex-Tribune reporter said to have collaborative relationship with CIA. That's the guy MSNBC uses? Mm-hmm. That's the guy. And you wonder why people get their news from YouTube? <laughs> you wonder why people don't trust the fucking mainstream news media? You wonder why Donald Trump became goddamn president? Because people don't trust a goddamn thing anybody says. They certainly don't trust the Democratic Party. Hillary Clinton had the lowest honesty ratings of any prime, any Democratic nominee in history. God damn it. This is unbelievable. Look at that. That's that guy. Yeah. What the F? You know, as a side note, I really hope Glenn Greenwald is planning on doing a documentary on all this. When, because he's been he's been doing an excellent job documenting all this. Like, yes. Like he's 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 basically been a documentarian of this whole thing. And, and a lot of other people have been doing great stuff too, but he's really been like Kind of like a nucleus for and keeping no bad, track of this And stuff. there's no amount of shame, Ron, that will stop these people. Because <laughs> there's money not. in it. Cause... Like Rachel Maddow, they did articles about uh, ra- how much time she spends on it, and they embarrass her. And, you know, that video we did about it, uh, Rachel Maddow is losing her mind and people are noticing, that has over 300,000 views for mm-hmm. a little stupid YouTube show. Mm-hmm. You know, and... Well, and we covered polls out there that, that indicate this stuff, where it's like six yes. percent of people, you know, care. Six percent, and and they spend seventy five percent of the time on on this stuff. I mean, it, it's absolutely it's they, a parody they, of itself. MSNBC has become they're 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 Fox News now. Yep, and so they're now is just as bad as. And so no CNN reporter is going to go uh, be suspended? No MSNBC no. or NBC reporter no. is going to be suspended? No, they just said they had independently confirmed it, Steph, and no one's going to be su- suspended for that. They, I just showed you how they said it was independently confirmed. And they're going to continue to rely on those two sources. And we don't that, know that who they're those... still insisting on protecting, yeah, too, those two right? sources. That, yeah. yeah, they're protecting. The two sources who gave them bogus information, you're supposed to out people who give you bogus information. Unless they're from the CIA. Oh, maybe they're from the CIA. Mm. Oh, maybe they're from the Congressional Committee. Maybe they're top Democrats who you get a lot of information from all the time. Or maybe they're CIA guys who you get information from all the time. I'm going to guess it probably maybe both. I want to share one more quote from The Intercept. Uh, from Glenn Greenwald. No matter your views on those political controversies, no matter how much you hate Trump or regard Russia as a grave villain and threat to our cherished democracy and freedoms, it has to be acknowledged that when the U.S. media is spewing constant false news about all of this, that, too, is a grave threat to our democracy and cherished freedom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the news, you know, again, thank you, Bill Clinton, for deregulating the telecommunications industry. So we only have six companies bringing us the news. That's fantastic. Again, thank you, Bill Clinton and your neoliberalism. And thank you, MSNBC, for pretending neoliberalism is not the problem, because that is the problem. Okay, well. uh, There you have it. There you have it. There you have it. And you wonder why people get their news from YouTube. Please make sure if you think you're subscribed, you're probably not. We get emails every day. <laughs> yeah. Someone got unsubscribed from our show three times. Yep. Three times. One three person times. unsubscribed three times. So please make make sure you're still subscribed and click the bell. And I don't know if you've noticed, our subscriber numbers have slowed. We were adding around, you know, a lot. We were adding around fifteen to 30,000 subscribers a month at one point. 
And now it's really slowed to a trickle. And it's because they keep unsubscribing all the people. And Matt, another guy sent me a screenshot yesterday. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, like if you think, like, these people just don't know. No, no, no. People are sending us screenshots. Like, this is really yeah. happening. People sent us a screenshot where he said that he went to, he was watching our video, went to subscribe, and it came up. There is a problem subscribing. <gasps> yeah. That was it the message. stopped it on his TV. Stopped yeah. it. Yeah. Like, as he was trying to watch it on his TV. So, please make sure you do that. And, uh... You know, we're in the fight of our lives, independent media, uh, telling the truth in a time of universal deceit is a revolutionary act. And that's what we're doing. (laughs) 